Hi everyone, welcome back to sunny Los Angeles. Well, virtually. Now, as promised, I'm back to report on the events of the Star Citizen, Citizen Con. Now, as usual, the event was delayed quite a lot. Pretty usual for uh, a CIG event. But uh, it did kick off with a presentation on the new, uh, what used to be called Orgs 2.0, but now Spectrum web platform, which they hope to roll out soon. Now this will also integrate with the uh, launcher as well. And uh, of course, anyone who's downloaded uh, Star Citizen knows that, uh, well, the download and launcher does leave a lot to be desired. So uh, hopefully all that's gonna be integrated and it was, well, just a bit over long, to be honest, the presentation. But a bit of breaking news is that Terminant, the people behind, um, well, the web platform, has just won an Adobe Award for their Star Citizen star map on the website. Well worth checking out. Now let's get back to what did we expect from the presentation. Well, obviously, Squadron 42 was going to feature quite highly had been talked at about by Chris Roberts at Gamescom and in interviews before the event. They did hope to complete a final polished level for CitizenCon but unfortunately things just wasn't ready. So a little bit of disappointment there although he did sort of outline the actual what they needed to, to do to complete Squadron 42 so that was an interesting a little bit of information and it also did outline uh, what the roadmap ahead for Star Citizen would be over the next well year or so hard to put timelines on anything and in fact uh, Chris Roberts never put a timeline on any of these things which is probably wise so a little bit of disappointment not seeing anything from Squadron 42 but they did have a commercial for the new ship on sale, the Polaris Corvette. Now this has already sold very well thanks to a pre-sale to concierge and uh, subscribers but it's got to be said that all the ships on sale like the Polaris can be earned in game. Any disappointment uh, of the non-appearance of Squadron 42 was really eclipsed by what was shown next. Now this was version 2 of what was shown at Gamescom, the Procedural Planets version 2 demo. Now this was completely on a different level and uh, well to be honest it took my breath away and uh, I've watched it time and time again and uh, in fact there's now a 60 frames per second uh, absolutely uh, glorious version available on the RSI website and uh, I'll leave a link in the description now let's have a look at some of the highlights now as we swept in high above the planet we passed a space station and traveled on down through the atmosphere now just think all this is one just well you can't really call it a level because there's never been anything like this in a game before. Albeit, this is just a demo at the moment. But the technology behind it, well, it certainly is groundbreaking. Now, we descended down through the atmosphere. There was a variety of landscapes we could see. There was deserts, mountains, scrubland and groves of trees. Now the actual uh, scope of the environment just took my breath away but the best was yet to come. Now this was just more than just a demo of some pretty landscapes. This was a, a, a mission demo as well. And for this they were flying a constellation Aquila. Now the whole uh, point of this mission was to find a downed javelin destroyer by finding uh, some distress beacons amongst this arid and spacious wilderness. 
Now, because everything was so vast, it was obviously too far to walk anywhere. Fortunately, the constellation Aquila comes with a Ursa Rover. Now these landscapes were huge and we could look back and see the distance that had been travelled and then we saw some wreckage from the down javelin destroyer. Well this planet was far from lifeless and there seemed to be some hostile sand people like creatures who decided to disable the Ursa rover. Fortunately their shooting skills wasn't quite up to their skills with explosives and they were quickly dealt with. With the Ursa rover disabled it was lucky that they managed to find a Drake Dragonfly. Now this ship is able to hover across the surface of planets yet also fly in space. Sand people weren't the only things living on this planet. There was something a lot worse. Eventually they arrived at the down javelin destroyer. Now it looked like it'd been here some time and it wasn't exactly empty either. As more sand creatures approached on dragonflies, there was one more surprise. Now following this impressive demo, Sean Tracy actually uh, demoed the tools they used to create this large planetary body and uh, he showed just how easy it is for them to create worlds of this scale. But of course all this will take a, f a time to get into the game. Obviously Squadron 42 will get polished and that will take time to complete and also the Star Citizen persistent universe will gradually evolve over time and as a fairly long-term backer now who's contributed a fair amount into the game I'm more than happy to wait when it's done it will be done and over recent years although there's been some great games released there's been quite a few disappointments games shown at trade shows where their graphics have been downgraded once they've been released and also other games where 
when they've been released, they've not lived up to what they've been promising and have been very disappointing. Now, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be back again when there's some more important news from Star Citizen worth reporting. Until then, I'm going to retire into a virtual world. Maybe I'll do some videos on that as well. Let's just hope I don't meet any giant sandworms. No! Oh!